Hi guys, welcome back to this week's podcast. This is part three of Rudy's story. And you're going to hear about her, you know, the rest of her adventure in life and how she got out of her situation. I'm happy that she has a better story than most coming out of where she came out of. And just sit back, relax, and hear what's going to happen next in her life and where she's at right now and things like that. Please check us out on all social media platforms. If you would like to be a part of the podcast, please DM us on Twitter or Instagram. Probably be the best way. TikTok, I feel like, is not going to be the best. Um, Link is in bio. Well, description on this platform, I should say. So if you want to go check us out on those things, you can. If you want to talk to me directly and only me, my information is also in the link tree down below. The other platforms, I'm not the only person who can see it. But if you only want me to see it, your host, Kay, did. My stuff is down below. And thanks for listening and who helped us share and grow bigger on this platform. Thanks and goodbye. So I want to say, how did you get out? Like, they kicked you out. Where did you go next? What was your next step? How did you get out? Of, like, what? How did you get housing? That's a real question. Right. Okay. So, um... I was in Prince George's County. That's where the place was at. So what I, in, so, okay, I have to go back a little bit. So um, like I had said, I was in Baltimore already. The reason why I was out here was because once my grandmother basically gave us back to my mom, she ended up moving us to Baltimore right. with this man. She She met a man. She met this man. Then barely didn't know nothing about him, but we ended up moving to Baltimore with him. Ooh. So now I'm in Baltimore. I'm becoming a teenager now. You know, I'm in I'm in high school. Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so I'm in high school. Um, then everything, you know, all that stuff ended up happening. But while I was out here, you know, I made friends. Um, so I had a best friend. She ended up living next door to me. And I I became like close with her and her family, you know. Like just knew her mom, her dad, her brother. Um, and her and I was friends. So when I was in the place and they told me, the lady told me, because it, it was just a lot with that, like words were said, a lot of stuff happened. The lady was like, Well, you need to find somewhere else to go. Okay. I called my best friend at the time and I told her about it, you know, and she ended up at the time she had her own place. Uh, we both were the same age, but she had her own place. She didn't have no kids or anything like that. She was doing good for herself right. um, at the time. And I had, I ended up calling her because the thing is when all that stuff was going on, when I, you know, I got pregnant and all this stuff and I became homeless. Her and I wasn't in touch. It was just like, we kind of got back to like in touch with each other through social media. Mm -hmm. And she was asking me like, what's going on? And I'm telling her like, this is what's going on. Like I'm, you know, like in a shelter. I'm just letting her know what was going on. Right. And um, when they put me out, I was telling her about it. And she was like, I just got my own place. Won't you come back to Baltimore? and just stay with like stay with me you can get yourself together like come stay with me so that's what I ended up doing um right. yeah so I ended up me and my son ended up coming back out here to Baltimore I stayed with her and I slowly started to get myself together like she didn't ask nothing like she didn't ask me for anything right. um you know and stuff like that that I just I didn't have my own room or anything I slept in the living room on a futon but I was grateful, you know, I was grateful for that. I ended up getting a job, just slowly started to, once I started making my own money, right? that was it. Like it was, I knew like that was it. I started making my own money. Uh, eventually I ended up getting my own place. Um, yeah, I ended up getting my own place. So that's how I found house. I did get help from like, um, you know, I started learning more stuff, like what I can get help with, all that stuff. Like I started really doing my research, going to social services, like really figuring out like, cause I didn't want nobody playing with me no more. Like y'all right. not gonna keep faking. <laughs> yeah, y'all not gonna keep. Yeah, y'all not gonna keep. You know, I just started getting just wiser about it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So when I started making money, uh, I was really good at saving. That was another thing that helped a lot. Just saving as much as I could, like saving money. Like I said, because I was staying with her, right. didn't ask me for anything. Like you don't have to pay rent. You know, that helped. Right. Yeah. Like you don't have to pay rent. Just say, you know, say what you can save. Um, I was getting food stamps. So I did like put food in the house. That was like our little arrangement. I put the food in the house, you know. She paid her bills because that's what she was doing anyway. Right. Um, yeah, and I took care of my son. Like, um, so then, yeah, I ended up getting my own place. But then I met my younger son's dad. Um, so because I got into that relationship, him and I moved together. You know, yeah. So, and then it's just <laughs> then a bunch of stuff after that. You know, right. but yeah, yeah. So it's that's how. It's interesting because I feel like I feel like if you're in a hierarchy of life, I guess this is the part doesn't matter for you. But if you're a person, mm -hmm. probably middle class, and things honestly happen, people don't think about how, example, flooding or just natural disasters in general, especially in New York City, we have a lot of those craziness in the past couple of years or things like that. We don't try to teach our kids about these things. And it's like something we should know how to do. God forbid something happened to your home. Where can you go? What do you need to get? What services can you ask for? I think it's Blue Cross, mm -hmm. uh, whatever they people come after, like a, a natural disaster to come help you, but they don't help right. you for a long period of time. They help you for a short period of time and they mm -hmm. leave and you're still left in lurch. I think especially if unless you have a, a family, you have a lot of family where you are. Our family's from Jamaica, so I don't have that much family in this country anyway. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I probably wouldn't ask them, <laughs> to be honest. But if you need to teach your kids certain things, they might not, they might never use these things. But I feel like people need to have the tools and the knowledge about certain things in case they do need it. Example, if your child has, if your child has a baby to be a grandkid or whatever, and maybe they're under a certain bracket, maybe they'll need WIC. Like certain things they just need, people just need to yeah. know. And um, I feel like we don't teach enough about these things. And yes, to me, it was embarrassing being on public systems, but I took it all right up and I definitely worked and I did my thing to, to provide my best for myself and my child. You know what I'm saying? So and my, yeah. and my mother was like, food stamps like my mother i don't know if anybody else i feel like it's a jamaican thing or just a caribbean thing in general mm -hmm. being on food stamps is like the scum of the earth like don't take no government assistance right. but I, I i didn't eat i need to wear clothes i need to i need to wash my hair yeah when you need it like, yeah when you need it it's like <laughs> you have to suck it up <laughs> that's all you gotta yeah. do so, <laughs> i think we need to teach yeah. our kids it's like you have to you have to <laughs> Yeah. So you I have to put your pride to the side. That's the yes. Your pride has that's to another pride. thing too. Yeah. For sure. So I think we need to teach our kids all these things that they need to survive. Um, teach our kids how to save. I think kids make accounts don't have any fees on it. Have your child if they do something around the house, 50 cent, a dollar, things like that. So they understand the price of like mm -hmm. how, how valuable money actually is, how hard you have to actually work for these things. Because when they get older, they're like, they're going to squander it off when they finally get a, a nice little check. And then all of a sudden they don't have nothing and God, right. they're all going to die. So it's like they are going to be left behind eventually mm -hmm. and they have to know how to do these things. Why would they teach only 18, 19, 20 year old? No, teach them about money when they're really young. I had to save an account when I was a baby. You know, I'm saying, granted, it, it, as an 18, I took it, all the money out. But the point is that I need to, I also needed the money. So that's why I took it out. But right. <laughs> teach, your, teach your kids how to do these things. Try to save yeah. for them. I know it might not be $100 you put in every month because in this economy, $100 is a lot. It's, it's a little, but it's a lot to put away and not use it. So I understand, put 50 cent, a dollar. Anything you can to kind of show them what to do um, so they can have the kind of the skills of those things and tell them how yeah. to do. Another thing people don't teach their kids how to, um, for, for housing, you need to have first and last month, like you have to have these things, first and last month of your rent to pay to get an apartment. You just don't just show up, you know, I need an apartment here in the front. No, you need yeah. a certain thing that you need. Certain apartments, I think a lot of them, I have, I didn't go to Shroud, but I've heard about it by watching on YouTube, um, have to pay apartment fees just to apply to apartments. To me, yeah. bonkers, but it's, I don't have the apartment, I have to apply, apply for a fee, but these are things people do not, do not think about um yeah it has to also be a reasonable amount of fees some fees people try to go too much about it sometimes it could mm -hmm. be the military's fee when they do everything but it all depends and 
teach your kids if they don't have the knowledge, they cannot do good for themselves. They need to know the information. They shouldn't be stumbling through life. Um, people think it's cute for their kids to stumble. Some yeah, and it's not. not everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that was me. Pretty much, like I had to learn a lot on my own. I wasn't taught yeah. a lot of stuff, so I do teach my kids a lot. Like I talk to them a lot about certain things, what's going on. This is how you do this. It's very important to teach them about credit, right. not to mess your credit up, um, things like that, because it's very important. They don't teach that stuff in school, so the the the, the re- like you need math and all that stuff. That is good, of course. You know how to how to read, how to write, all that stuff too. But when you get out here in the real world, right. <laughs> It's like it's just a, it's a lot of stuff that you need to know, right? You know that they just don't teach, so it's That's up to us to teach them. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it doesn't matter what I'm going through or whatever. I make sure that my kids um do know certain stuff. They have chores. They get paid for it. Um, just like certain values, just knowing how to even like wash dishes, You're right? My laundry, you yeah. know, cooking food. Like you have to know certain survival skills too to be able to survive out here. So yeah, all of that is important. Because exactly. when you do get into a situation, because it's gonna happen. Right. Eventually. Yeah, something may happen. Not as not for everybody to where as though you may become homeless. Right. But you can get into any type of situation just unexpected. And if you don't have if you don't have a savings account, if you don't have the knowledge to be able to, you know, figure your way out of that, you're going to be lost. Right. You're going to be lost. But, yeah, you can always, I was going to say, you can always figure it out eventually if you determine enough to figure it out because that's what I had to do. That's definitely yeah. true. Like, you talked about credit. That's about those eight, probably she don't care about credit as much, but I still try to tell her stuff about stocks and stuff. She's like, mommy, what's yeah. that? Try to explain. About two more years, you're going to ask me the same thing, but you know, I'm ready for it because they mm-hmm. ask the same questions like a billion times until they get it. Um, yeah. But example, if your credit score is not good, you can't get out of loan. And granted, if you need it for an emergency, if you need loan, like loan is a thing to kind of, you know, granted the interest rate is, is pricey, but if you need something right now, you might take out that loan right now to kind of get your life together. So it makes sense to do that, right? right. So yeah. those kind of things, loan, um, life insurance, rental insurance, People don't think mm-hmm. about that. Like, if you have a fire yeah. in your house, if you have rental insurance, that can help you out. You know, you have a premium, you know, they have a lot of back-end stuff. But if you lost everything, you might think about that premium later and you get you need to get your stuff right, right now. Like, you need bed sheets. Right. You need all these things to survive. So, it's like, you think about those things. So, just be aware of those things, too. I'm not going to tell you about this for all your money, but you need insurance, life insurance, health insurance, yeah. rentals insurance. These are things you actually need to be able to have a proper a life. Yeah, you know? So just be mindful, people. Be very mindful how you do certain things. I'm happy that you, even though you had other things and bumps along the road, I'm happy you got out of the situation. I'm happy that yeah. you and your son is safe. And you have two sons out. Yeah, I feel like it's two sons on your channel. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. um, you, you, you're strong. Not only the, the, the fittest can make it through this journey. It's not an easy journey. Um, yeah. I think you're better than me because you went through the streets and I'm like, <laughs> I want to, but I, I don't think I'm made for New York City streets. I, I'm not made for it. Um, only the, yeah. the tough, the toughest could go through that, especially with a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would sleep on the train. Not probably. I would have slept on the train. I'm not gonna lie to you, because being on the yeah. street is tough. My daughter's born in August too, so it'd been you know convenient to be on the train, but it'll be hot unless they have AC. But you know, mm-hmm. as our trains are kind of violent, so yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's just crazy you know, everywhere. It is. It really is. But guys, we have come to the end of the podcast. I have a question before we leave. Um, mm-hmm. Any solutions you think that the system might need? It? Like any broken parts that you see that we can do better at right now in America? Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, Like... So where I'm at, I'm in Baltimore. Right. And I think it's very important. Like, I think that if people, I know people don't, a lot of people are not into like politics and things like that. But I think if we all kind of come together to vote on like um, 
who is running your county, like, you know, your mayor or whatever. Right. Um, that is important because like here in Baltimore, which I honestly, because, you know, I'm not from here, but I, I'm planning on moving right. because they don't offer a lot of resources here. Got it. Um, they kind of stopped a lot of stuff, you know, and I'm not sure what, I don't know if that's like a, has something to do with the mayor that's here, like what he's doing, you know, and stuff like that. But right. um, I would say, I don't know. I really don't know because like, I know like on your end, like you're more involved with, right. um, you know, that stuff and I'm right. not, but so I don't know, but I know every place is different and um, I think these places should have more compassion too. Yes, for sure. That That's one thing I can just say, like, because I know you can go somewhere, for example, like go to social services and you may need um like temporary cash assistance or whatever. Right. Um, the, you know, you know how the workers are there at those places. You know, they look at you or treat you <laughs> as if like you... Like you could, like you never, right, you scum or you never was able to get yourself to, like, what is going, why are you here? You know, you can't get yourself together. You can't work. You can't. And it's not even that. You don't know everybody's situation or what they're going through and stuff like that. So I would say, um, you know, people that are in those positions to help others have more compassion, you know, but you just don't know why they are there. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah. I would just leave it at that. <laughs> it seems like no matter what state you are in, the HRA office is a hot mess. So maybe that's the oh. whole system problem because in New yeah. York, every single worker is garbage. But some of them are literally a paycheck from being homeless yourself, but they're treating me like trash. I'm just putting it out there. Exactly. <laughs> It's exactly. Just, it can't be us. It cannot be us, the people, getting the services. It got to be the... the the network of cash assistance programs out there was either hiring bad people or mm. need to either do better, um, probably better like in-house counseling or something. I know working at those mm-hmm. kind of jobs, I'm not going to always put it on the person itself. It's draining. You're hearing a sob story yeah. every day. Mm-hmm. Most people on their job, I feel like forever, but also they don't, they don't pay them enough. So again, we need to get the cola together, guys. Basically, yeah. um, the low wages for people, need to, it needs to go up. Especially in bigger cities when the rent is up to Wazoo, we need to work on paying right. people better so they don't end up in a homeless shelter like a lot of people in the New York City, um, people right now. Forty eight percent of people in forty eight percent of people in the shelter have a city job. That's the problem. They're not getting paid enough, but in a shelter, doesn't make sense. You're you're paying yeah. the thing twice. It doesn't make sense. So yeah. we need to do better with that. But also, if you don't love your job, you probably need to quit. I'm just saying, because you're also yeah, putting right. yourself on. We already have before we got to you. We had problems and a trauma, and we're coming to you. <laughs> and you're adding to the to the crap was already out there. So it's like, please, if you don't like your job, ask them for a job in the back with Kent or somebody who who only do paperwork and not handling the people mm-hmm. because you're stressing us out. <laughs> I'm happy I don't have to go to this office no more, but you're stressing the people out. I'm just saying you're, you're making the atmosphere of our communities worse. And I thank you yeah. for the service that you're giving us, but you need to do better. I'm just I'm just yeah. putting it out there. But um, yes. But thank you guys. Thank you for coming to the end of the podcast. Thank you for listening. Follow us on all our social media accounts. We're trying to get bigger and better, guys. We're trying to bring you more things this year. You know, we have the hot topics coming on for this year and things like that, as you will see. If you have any ideas or any hot topics you do want to hear us talk about, definitely check us out on Twitter, on Instagram. We're always putting up stuff for jobs and things like that. If you're a, a company or a nonprofit that wants to hear, um, to put information on here we'd love to have it if you're a person who wants to be added to the resource packet you can add it on there if you're a person who wants to tell their story come on and tell your story and make people hear your voice because your voice is important so thank you guys see you next time bye